Walby Belgium is the country's largest theme park. It opened in 1975 as the original Walby Park. There's currently three right now. There's one in the Netherlands as well as France. And for a couple of years, this park was actually known as Six Flags Belgium. It certainly had an interesting history. It's currently home to nine roller coasters, bunch of family rides, and let me just say, this park is big, bigger than I was expecting. There's a lot to do here, so I'm gonna do my best to walk through the entire park, go through some of the key experiences and attractions that you can do while you visit. I was only able to spend one day at the park when I visited this past summer, and I definitely would have loved more time here. Unfortunately, on the particular day that we visited, it was fairly busy, so we absolutely had to prioritize like our top attractions. So unfortunately, we did miss a couple things. That includes their Vacoma SLC Vampire, their Boomerang, as well as their kids coaster. I think the thing that saved us though was the Conda single rider line. Yo, that's their biggest roller coaster. It's their newest attraction. It was the ride that really made us want to visit this park. And it certainly had a long line throughout the day, but because of that single rider line, we were still able to ride a decent number of times. So we were able to make do with the one day that we had. But despite the crowds, I would say that overall, I was pretty impressed with this park, certainly because of how much there is to do here. Well, also everything is well landscaped. There's some good theming throughout. So let's talk about what you can expect when you come here. So first things first, Walby Belgium is located just south of Brussels. We got there right at opening. There was a decently long line to get into the park. We did go on a weekend. This front entry area features a lot of different stonework. Their color palette primarily consists of tans and yellows and reds. And of course you have that big W over the front entrance. It's a little tacky, but I guess they want to make sure you know where you are. So it is what it is. You pass through your main turnstiles. There's a tiny little main street right there. Like your main gift shop is to the left. There's a concession stand to your right. The first roller coaster that you'll get to is Vampire. Because we've ridden so many Vacoma SLCs before, it was a no-brainer to skip this one because of the amount of time that we had to work with. We barely got all of the main attractions done, so I had no problem missing this one so we could prioritize something a little bit more unique. To the left of the entrance is Aqua Libby. So this is the water park of Walby, Belgium. And something a little unique here, it is completely indoors. And I feel like that's pretty rare for a theme park to have an attached indoor water park. Very strange, but the advantage to that is that it can be open when the main park is not. So while we never went inside, you could see, at least as you're walking around, that there are a couple water slides jetting out. Indoors, a giant wave pool and whatnot. I'm not usually a big water park guy, so I wouldn't say visiting Aqualibi was a high priority for me. But it's from there that the park breaks off into an overall circle layout around this lake in the center. At least that's how it is for the front half. The back half continues that circular format, but it's around a smaller lake, and there's a couple more like niche paths winding around. The plus side to this layout is that it is very easy to navigate and also gives you some great views as you're looking across the water at all the different rides. But this park is pretty big. If you wanted to walk from the front all the way to the back where like Conda is, it's gonna take a minute. You know, I'd been to Walby Holland before and relatively speaking, that park is actually kind of small or maybe just a bit more average size. Walby Belgium felt like a large park. You know, they had a lot of land to work with. And to my understanding, they still have a lot of land to work with. I think that they are gonna be just fine, at least when it comes to expansion. After you pass by Vampire, if you're going around the park in a counterclockwise fashion, you'll hit a wave swinger. There's this large stage here, which I'm assuming is usually done for shows. Although when we walked past it, it was just being used for meet and greets. There was naturally a wallaby up there. So you could like get your picture with them. It was cute. The next big attraction that you'll hit is Loop Guru, otherwise known as Werewolf. This ride sucks, but unfortunately the people love it. So not only are you getting a bad ride, but you're gonna have to wait a long time for it. That's like the worst possible combination you could have. I don't know why people like it so much. Maybe just because of how cool that wooden structure looks. I think this is a prime candidate for the RMC treatment. They did it with Robin Hood and we got Untamed. So who knows, maybe it's possible. I personally feel like that would really round out this park's collection. Because right now they don't really have a standout number two attraction. It's like Conda's your top ride. But after that, there's a bit of a drop off. So that'd be the number one thing I would do to fix Wallaby Belgium. But after you pass the Loop Guru, I gotta say this section right here is really pretty. It's one of the areas of the park that actually kind of felt like a botanical garden. Like you look around, you don't really see any rides and you're like, wait, am I in a theme park? It's just you and some pretty pathways in nature. And I feel like it's areas like this that separates this park from Wallaby Holland. Like I just feel like there's a lot more to Wallaby Belgium than meets the eye. 
The next roller coaster that you'll get to is Pulsar. This is a mock rides power splash, the only one in Europe. It was a prototype, and unfortunately when we went, it was having a lot of problems. So most of the time when we got to the attraction, it was closed, but we did manage to get on it towards the end of the day. We got our one ride. I really like the placement of this attraction. I feel like it is such a spectacle to watch. Like presentation is really nice. That's on the edge as you're entering their Wild West section because we're in Europe at a theme park. Of course, there's a Wild West area. Personally, this area didn't really do it for me. I thought it was kind of lackluster. At least as far as European theme parks go, I've definitely seen better ones. I think Port of Ventura still has my favorite Wild West section that I've seen. There's two main attractions in this area. So first, there's an intimate drop tower called Dalton Terror. I don't know who Dalton is, but the ride gave good views. I mean, it's not a super tall drop tower, but like we went up on the side where you could see Conda and it looked pretty nice. Fairly forceful, so I'd say do it if you have the time. The other main one is Calamity Mine, and this is a great mine train. So there's two lift hills, lots of theming, very reminiscent of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. It even has that slanted lift hill part at one point. There's a waterfall, some water effects. It's a long experience, really well done coaster. Big fan of this one. And then from there you enter your exotic area and this place is nice. This is the section that surrounds Tiki Waka. So it's a Gerslauer family coaster, opened in 2018. So it's fairly new. And I thought that this was like the best looking section of the park. So it's a Polynesian theme. Everything just feels very tropical. Just good views all around. The actual roller coaster experience was okay. It kind of felt like an upgraded Wild Mouse. I don't know. I thought it looked better than it rode. That's another one that had a single rider line. So take advantage of that because that roller coaster got a long line when we were there. But the advantage with Walby Belgium, something I was absolutely a fan of is no matter which roller coaster you go to, the operations were great. They were fast with their dispatches. The rides that could run more than one train were. It seemed like they cared about efficiency here. And as you're exiting that Polynesian theming, you're making your way back to Conda. Yes, you're now towards the back of the park. I know, it took a while. The park isn't very wide, it's just very long. So Conda opened in 2021. It's their biggest roller coaster. There's already a full separate review of the attraction already on this channel. Please go check it out if you want to hear about that ride because there's a lot to discuss with that one. So let's continue the loop and make our way back. After Conda, you'll encounter your first of two shooting dark rides in Walby, Belgium, which is a little weird. One features practical effects, the other features screens. This one that we're talking about is a dark ride theme to King Tut. So everything's very Egyptian. Great set design. There's animatronic. They're simple, but they look nice. And in my opinion, this ride does not need to be a shooting dark ride. I think the shooting is completely irrelevant. The set designs are good enough where it can stand on its own. I literally stopped shooting partway through because I was like, I don't need to. The story and the theming is good enough. I feel like a lot of theme parks will use shooting as a crutch to hide the fact that like the actual theming and presentation is just kind of okay. So they're like, oh, we'll make it interactive. So it's more fun. It was absolutely necessary for the other dark ride, which we're going to talk about here in a second. But this one that one hundred percent could have done without it. So now that you're starting to make your way back towards the front, the next roller coaster you're going to encounter is CK Underground. This is an indoor Schwarzkopf shuttle coaster and it has an updated launch system. It doesn't use that flywheel like you would see on Montezuma's Revenge. Obviously, they're doing some updates to that, so it's no longer there. But instead, CK Underground uses linear induction motors. And it's a cool ride experience. Most of it takes place in the dark, but they do have some flashing lights. I think it's fun to ride. I don't think it looks very good though from the outside like as you're waiting in that outdoor queue it's very reminiscent of like six flags but like bad six flags now i think that's one of my biggest critiques with walby belgium is you know there's a sharp difference between the areas of the park that are newer and older the newest sections of walby belgium look fantastic some of the older areas maybe back from when the park was six flags do not look so great like not necessarily bad but just not a lot to it you know kind of cheap looking so my hope is that as walby belgium grows in the future they're able to continue with that standard of theming that they've set with some of these other sections and maybe even go back and redo some of these older areas so now you're back around in that central lake towards the front half of the park there's a kids area here called fun world the only reason we saw it at all was because we are walking past it so we could finish the loop i mean it looked like it had a decent number of rides for kids there is a small roller coaster 
they're called Fun Pilot. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we did skip that one. Next door is a river raft ride called Raja River. I was told that this one's a soaker, so personally, I passed on it. I'm not a big fan of walk around with wet clothing, but seem to be pretty popular with the public as well as those who are big fans of raft rides. So now we made it to our last section of the park. That's where their boomerang is. This section is not super big, but I really like the detail. There's an elephant jetting out of a building. It's used as a mister to cool people off. That is so fun. I really would have loved to have spent more time here just soaking in all of the little details. So this was absolutely one of the standout sections. I wish they had a better ride here other than the boomerang. But that is where you encounter your second shooting dark ride, and that is Popcorn Revenge. So this is screen-based, and you're shooting popcorn. It's pretty creative. It's well-themed. When you're in the queue, they make it look like you're entering a movie theater, and then the ride vehicle takes you to different screenings, and there's lots of references to famous films, which was funny. So personally, I enjoyed this attraction. I know not everyone does, but I knew nothing about it going in, and I had a good time. Keep the shooting with this one. Remove the shooting from the King Tut ride. So there you go. There's a look at some of the big things that you can expect when you go to Walby, Belgium. Obviously, I know I didn't touch on everything, but the bottom line is that this is a really well-done park. It's a place that I'm excited to go back to one day. I like the direction that they're heading in. I hope they keep it up. I think one of the big things they could do in the future, not soon, but one day, I'd love to see them remove some of those like cookie cutter filler roller coasters that are just not high quality. I'm talking their SLC, the Boomerang, Loop Guru, and replace them with something modern and new. Like, yeah, some of those rides might get lines now, but I guarantee you that if something better was there, the public would like it even more. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what happens in the future. But let me know down in the comments below if you've been to Walby, Belgium, if you agree with the points that I brought up. If you're planning a visit, I hope that this review helped you. And if you're new to the channel, I'd love if you could subscribe and check out some of the other park reviews we've done from places all across the world. They're all available in a playlist organized by the park's name. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.